and welcome back to Redirecting. I have a very odd story that I'm going to share with you. Uh, this story is about a pastor who is coming out as an atheist, but they are still able to keep their job. Interesting, very interesting. I'm not surprised at all, but this is very interesting. I'm going to read this article, and then, of course, I have many things that I can say about this. It says, a United Church minister who had faced an unprecedented ecclesiastical court hearing over her professed atheism is no longer in danger of a defrocking after the two sides reached an agreement in the long-running case. In an unexpected development this week, Reverend Greta Vosper at the church settled ahead of what some had dubbed a heresy trial leaving her free to minister to her East End Toronto congregation. It's going to be wonderful, Vosper said in an interview Friday. We'll be out from underneath that heavy cloud. Now we'll be able to really fly. The settlement, the terms of which are confidential, came during what was supposed to be a week of routine preliminary motions ahead of the full hearing later in the month. The church did not immediately respond to a request for comment Friday, but said in a statement that the formal hearing had been called off in light of the agreement. <clears throat> While the Reverend Wright Richard Bott was elected in July to lead the church in Canada, said in a public message that he was pleased with the resolution. At the same time, Bott acknowledged the controversy that has been swirling around Vosper at the church's initiative to fire her. In a message the adhe to adherents, Bott referenced the church's core value of faith in God and inclusiveness. That inclusiveness thing is just getting out of hand, you all inclusiveness of everything that is not of the most high but anyway <clears throat> the dance between two core values how they interact with and inform each other is one that we continue to explore as followers of jesus and children of the creator he said as a christian church we continue to expect that ministers in the united church of canada will offer their leadership in accordance with our shared and agreed upon statements of faith Vosper 60, who was ordained in 1993 and several, I'm sorry, and had served as a minister of West Hill United Church since 1997, has been upfront about her atheism and non belief in the Bible for years. Most of her current congregants are supportive of her views, but some have been critical, saying her beliefs are a fundament, at fundamental odds with the doctrine and values of the United Church, Canada's second largest religious denomination. Things came to a head after she wrote an open letter to the church's spiritual leader following the Charlie Hebdo massacre in Paris in, 19, in January 2015, in which she pointed out that belief in God can motivate bad things. Okay. <clears throat> Following complaints, the Toronto Conference Interview Committee conducted a review that found in a split decision in 2016 that Vosper was unsuitable to continue in ordained ministry because she does not believe in God, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit. Vosper's lawyer, Julian Falconer, called it an important day for the United Church that his client no longer was risk of sanction. Both parties took a long look at the cost benefit at running a heresy trial and whether it was good for anyone and the results speak for themselves, Falconer said. They recognize there's a place for Greta and that there is no reason to separate the minister and the congregation. Okay, there is a link for a continuation of this story. Um, if I remember, I will put the link to this article. To sum it up, they said there is no reason to separate the minister from her congregation. And so, after coming out as an atheist, she gets to keep her job as a pastor. Okay. 
So she was appointed. She was ordained. There is a difference in being ordained by man and ordained by the Most High Yah. There is a huge difference. As you see in this case here, this woman was ordained by men. Most people out here are ordained by man. When the Most High places an anointing or a calling upon a person, you don't need a piece of paper from a man. You don't need a degree from man. You don't need any type of anything from man. You don't need the Christian church approval from the church of Christ, the church of whoever. You don't need any of that when the Most High ordains you, right? But as you see, with these man-made religions and man-made ordinations, man-made certificates, man-made degrees, man-made appointments, you get this type of nonsense where anything goes. You have people sitting up in the church that have all of these alternative lifestyles, doing all kinds of things, and they are doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. This is why it's important to know the truth, right? It's important to know the truth because all of these things creep in when people seek the approval of man. There is nowhere in scripture. This is why you have people such as this woman here who went and got her ordination. She got her schooling and her education from some man-made institution, right? And she got her ordination and her certificate from some man-made institution to speak, preach, and teach the word of the Most High, and she don't even believe. It amazes me. It amazes me that more and more we are starting to see people that who are self-appointed in positions, calling themselves teachers, preachers, and pastors. Some of them don't even have the Ruach HaKadosh. Some of them don't even have a true relationship with the Most High. Some of them don't even believe in the Most High. Here this woman is, she says, look, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, none of it. And for those of us who know the true name of the Father, she, she, she definitely don't believe in Yah, right? She don't believe in the Israelites. She don't believe in any of them. She don't believe in the Bible, but she's here teaching it. This is what I call a reprobate nation, a reprobate move, a reprobate institution where people are appointing people to teach the word of the Most High who don't even believe in it. And even if you do believe in it, it doesn't mean just because you believe in it that you're qualified as a teacher. The point that I'm trying to make is that the Most High ordains and anoints and appoints. But when you have people that are going through these institutions, such as this, appointing themselves, appointing others, here's your certificate, here's this, here's that. Do you think any of the apostles got some type of certificate from these heathenistic institutions to give them permission or to anoint them to teach the word? When I see this kind of stuff and I see that the ruling is that she gets to keep her job and what's sad is they said members of the congregation, members of her congregation believe the same way that she do. This is why I say religion has turned the truth into just this masquerade of whatever. This is just some new knowledge to gain for a lot of people. It's not about having a relationship with, a relationship with the Most High. A lot of people don't understand what it means to have a relationship with the Most High. You can't claim to have a relationship with the Most High and you are this hateful, evil, deceitful, wicked, devilish person. Do you think our forefather Abraham was some wicked, conniving, lying, cheating, stealing person? No, he was not. Our forefather Abraham was to the point where the Most High called him friend. And you have people who think that just because they have on this religious garment and they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof, or that they have some type of religious background that that automatically gives them a relationship with the Most High. What's sad is a lot of people don't realize that you can't even claim to love the Most High and you hate your brother or your sister. 
So many people claim to love the Most High, but they can't stand their brothers and sisters. He said, you a liar. If you are a person who claim to love me, but you can't stand, you got bitterness and hate and malice and jealousy in your heart against your brother or sister, you are a liar if you claim to love me. My thing is this. I don't understand why people such as this woman here even want to attach themselves to the Bible, to any type of um, faith or any type of uh, religion that they call um, as serving the Most High or serving God as they call them. Why even attach yourself to this? Are you treating this as a job? It is obvious that is what she is doing. For her, this is a job. For some people, they actually get into this because they want to become famous. They want to become rich. They want to gain a following. They're not in this because they were called by the Most High to do this. This woman clearly wasn't called. And this is not just for Christians too. This is people who call themselves in the truth too. Um, who believe themselves to be Israelites. A lot of people get in this so that they can be known by men. So that they can be seen as big in the eyes of men. At the end of the day, men have not a heaven or a hell to put you in. Make sure that you nurture your relationship with the Most High Yah. Forget about what people think because you can gain the, the biggest following. Millions of people can follow you. They can love you. They can adore you. They can seek after you. They can call on you. But if your soul ain't right, if you are this wicked person, you got this evil in your heart, if you have hatred and malice in your heart, if you have all of these things in your heart that do not represent the Most High Yah, what have you gained? The scripture says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So forget about trying to gain a following, trying to get people to follow after you and to just love you and adore you. It's not about you. It is about winning souls. That's what it's about. Not drawing people nigh unto you, but drawing people nigh unto Yah. Okay? The Most High says that one plants, another sows, but Yah gives the increase. He is the one to give the increase. Don't think for one minute that it is of you that anybody comes to the Most High. You might be the vessel. You might be the vessel. But don't take any pride in that. Don't take any pride in that. We know that the Most High put it on our hearts to do the film series, White It Out. But at the end of the day, it is the Most High who has drawn his people to himself, right? You might be the vessel, but it's because of the Most High Yah. It is not because of me or because of you. We have to stay humble in all of this. We have to hide ourselves under the shadow of his wings, right? He is to be seen, not us. He is to be glorified, not us. If you are seeking self-glorification, if you are seeking a job like this woman, if you're seeking to just fulfill some type of goal in your life, you have a job as a minister or as a teacher, and you're being paid to do this, but you don't care about the souls of people, you don't even believe what it is you're teaching, what point is it? What is the point? So I just thought I wanted to share this story with you all because there are so many people out here like this, not necessarily atheists as in the case of this woman, but people who are out here teaching and preaching and evangelizing for the wrong reasons, not because they are called, but because they are appointed by themselves. They self-appointed or they had man appoint them, okay? There's a way to know if you are doing the will of the Father. Ye shall know them by their fruits. That is how you know. With that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also, comment, share, like, and subscribe.